What's up, Techno fam? Chana D, your Techno Dad here, and we're going to talk today about value. And how do you spell value? Three little letters O S D. So what are we talking about and how is OSD bringing value to home theater? Simple, 11 speakers and three subwoofers for $700. What? What? That is nuts. Like that is value to the max. Okay, so I'll be reviewing that speaker system. I'll show you how I have it set up here in the studio and all the equipment that I'm using. You're gonna ask yourself, well, an 11 channel AV receiver is pretty expensive. This is true. The current Denon X6700H is $2,600. If we jump down a couple of tiers to the Denon X3700, which I made a video about and I'll link down in the description and with the card on top. So if you are going to go with the speaker package, I would highly recommend getting the X3700H to go along with it. So you're going to need the X3700H and a little desktop two channel amplifier. I use this four channel amplifier because I was like, hey, why don't I just, you know, power all four high channels with the same little amplifier. So everything's kind of even the ear level speakers have the even amount of power and the high channels have an even amount of power. So now we've got like a $1,200 AV receiver, a little amp and a speaker package. So we're right around $2,000, give or take, depending on how you can find the AV receiver. Sometimes it's on sale, sometimes it's not. So that all depends. So how is this high in value? Upstairs, I have Martin Logan ESLX speakers as my main speakers. Now each of those is $2,000. So for that one speaker, I get an AVR, 11 speakers and three subwoofers for the same price, that's nuts. And in here, in my studio, I can set up a 7.3.4 Dolby Atmos and DTSX configuration. That is pretty insane. And I'll tell you this, right now, I get a better experience here in my studio than I do upstairs. Why is that? It's because this room is perfectly rectangular. So when I point my seat up in the front here, I am pretty much equidistant from every pair of speakers around the room. Here's a shot of the Denon after it did the measurements for Odyssey. And you can see here, everything is pretty much symmetrical except for the surround right. I gotta push that back a little bit. And that's going to make it so that this is like probably one of the more perfect environments to watch a movie in. And I have been going ham watching a whole bunch of movie clips, Dolby Atmos demos. I went through and took all my favorite demos from the 2016 and 2018 Dolby Atmos demo discs and like compiled them into one folder with a bunch of subfolders, you know, music, Dolby content, film and TV and all that kind of stuff and just ran through pretty much all of them. You know, Batman vs Superman, Wonder Woman, Everest, Unbreakable. Of course, there was a Game of Thrones clip in there as well. Some video game stuff. And of course, my favorite, Dolby Atmos content, like this is Dolby Atmos and Audiosphere. Those are some of my favorite Dolby Atmos demos. And here in the studio, wow, it was nuts. It was nuts. And there is something to having all of your speakers being exactly the same. There is something to that like cohesive bubble all around you, all enveloping, all immersive. So that was really cool and uh, something interesting to experience. Now, one of the things I don't get upstairs because I don't have room is surround back. And I have my surround backs in here now at the studio, which is actually right here. I'm facing them, right? Because normally I'm just facing forward when I'm watching a movie. That was definitely something. Now, the two best Dolby Atmos experiences I'm getting out of uh, newer releases are 300, the 4K UHD release. That's just insane. You The first, as soon as you start it, like the thunder comes in and it comes in from like the top left, kind of through you. And then it, there's all kinds of cool stuff just right in the beginning. Fantastic. And the second one is Midway. There's all kinds of craziness happening when the planes are flying around and the pew, 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 pew. It's just, you know, bullets whizzing by your ear and really does put you in that whole situation. So before we get into me talking about the sound and the measurement I took of these little speakers, let's do a quick unboxing so you see what you get. I got a total of four boxes, one for each subwoofer and one containing the 11 speakers. Now in the 11 speaker box, you get a whole bunch of little boxes. And in each box, you get a speaker, you get some literature, you get a little wall mounting plate, 
screws, and the little green adapter thing, which is how you connect to the speakers. They come in black and they come in white. I'm not sure why they gave me one white speaker, maybe just to show you guys that it came in white as well. So I use that one as my center channel. As you can see, they're like Apple sized speakers, which is definitely cool. They use a three inch driver and that's pretty much it. You can see the subwoofer, nothing crazy here on the front, just the 10 inch driver. On the back, we have input, volume, crossover, phase, and the power port and power switch at the bottom. Now, the interesting thing is that we are going to have to split the signal from the subwoofer output on the AV receiver because these subwoofers don't have an in and an out RCA. So I got some splitters and some extenders so that I can split the signal, go to one sub and continue on to the next sub and then split the signal again to go to the third subwoofer. And since we're on the topic of cables, you're probably asking yourself how much cable do I need? This room is 14 by 10 with eight foot ceilings. So I bought four 100 foot spools. Now, if you think that's a lot of cable, the surround backs took 30 feet each and the rear heights were about six feet higher than them. So right there, we're at like 140 feet. Just buy some extra cable. It's not a big deal. If you don't use it, return it. Simple. Now, one of the things I always use to connect speakers to amplifiers are banana plugs. I think this makes life a whole lot easier. And if you're going out and buying a system, even if it's not this system, just remember one speaker needs two pairs of banana plugs. One pair at the speaker end and the other pair at the AV receiver end. So if you're going for a 5.1 speaker system, you're going to need 10 pairs of banana plugs for all five speakers. Now, this is not the case here for OSD Black. They use these little green situations here to plug into the speaker. Now, one of the things I didn't know I was gonna need was a really, really small screwdriver. Luckily for me, I had one that I used to upgrade components on my old MacBook Pro. So I just had one laying around. And that is huge because I would have had to wait, you know, another couple of days to order something from Amazon because we just don't have any of that kind of thing here in Mammoth. Now, when I was stripping the cable for the speaker side of the cable, I actually stripped it a little too long. As you can see here in the video, you can see a little bit of the wire kind of hanging out and that's not good. And the reason why it's not good is if those two wires touch, well, it completes the circuit and the AV receiver clips clip means it's it turns off so it just turns off it shuts down when the two wires touch each other and that kept happening when i had the front stage all set up i'm like what's going on i was like oh maybe the wires are touching and so that's when i went back and kind of clipped them a little bit shorter so that they would stick in all the way without any exposed wire so there's a pro tip for you guys so why don't i take you on a little bit of a tour here We've got the front stage sitting at the top of this rack. It's four foot high and six feet wide. Now, the cool part about it being six feet wide is that I do get a nice wide stereo image across the front stage, which is something you really don't get with the sound bar. Now, if I'm sitting on my chair and I turn to the left, I'll see my surround speaker sitting on my mixer. I have it on top of like an Oralex Mopad that I cut just so that it would kind of level out and be a little bit more solid than just sitting on a bunch of mixer knobs. And on the opposite side, if I was sitting on my chair and turning to the right, I have the surround right sitting on a table in between my synthesizers. Now I found this tabletop microphone stand, which actually works out really, really well. It's got a super heavy, solid base. The only thing is there's no like screw hole at the bottom to mount it to anything. So I had to get a flat base or one of these. Now I went with mic stands because I got some other speakers coming in here for a different project, which you guys should definitely subscribe up and stay tuned for because that's gonna be insane. Anyway, those speakers have a thread for a microphone stand. So I kind of just went with the microphone stand because I knew I was gonna be getting these other speakers in. So this one just kind of looks a little jerry-rigged here, just a bunch of gaff tape to kind of keep it in there. And it's working out so far, so whatever. Now directly behind me on my desk, you can see my surround back speakers. Again, these OSD black satellites can be pretty much placed anywhere. They fit perfectly here and they're at the perfect height for me to hear everything going on right behind me. Okay, so up front, I used the mounting brackets that came with the OSD black satellites because it was super easy to use. Four screws, I was done and I mounted them to the frame of my sliding mirror doors for the closet, which was super easy. I didn't have to look for a stud or anything like that. But I mean, you know, you could probably use drywall anchors because these speakers really aren't that heavy. 
Now for the rear heights, I did not want to remove any of my sound paneling and then try to drill for holes and all that kind of nonsense. So again, I went with a mic stand. This time it was a boom style mic stand, which I did some calculations when I found them on Amazon and they will go up to seven feet tall or a little bit higher. And as you can see here, they're pretty close to the ceiling. And the cool part, since it is a boom microphone stand, I was able to tilt them down a little bit so I can get the proper angle. Again, yes, this is not how these things were intended to be used. As you can see, there's more gaff tape here and they have been hanging out for the last like week and a half without any issues. So, hey, if it works, it works. And the height channels are ringing clearly through there. They're in the right spot. So I'm pretty stoked about it. As far as subwoofer placement, I have two in the back of the room, one underneath my desk right next to my PC, one on the other side of my PC in the corner, and the third subwoofer is in the front of the room by the front stage. All right, so what did I think about this 11 channel system? Well, on OSD Black's website, it says that they go down to 100 hertz, which was really strange to see Odyssey set them at 150. Now I went ahead and measured these with REW, that's Room EQ Wizard. So if we look at the frequency curve without Odyssey, we can see it falling off around 150. Definitely not the 100, which is down here at like 56 decibels. If we look at the center channel and the sub with Odyssey on, we've got a better frequency response. We do have a couple of peaks like right here around 400 Hertz. Up here, the 10K to 20K, it's all over the place. There's a little bump here at 70 Hertz as well. And on the flip side, we got a dip here, which is around 116 Hertz. Right here at like 1300, it starts to dip down again. From 1300 to around 19K, we got another downward dip there. I'd say it's not bad. It's also not great, but at least we get a full 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, you know, full range sound out of this speaker system, which is huge for the value. Again, we have to talk about value and the price and how much this costs. You're getting 11 speakers and three subwoofers for $700. So you got to kind of give and take a little bit here and there. As far as movie watching, this is great. This is a great experience in this room. It sounds better than the system I have upstairs. And that is insane. Of course, upstairs, I've got Martin Logan's on the ear levels. I've got SVS. And, you know, in the height channel, so it's a little bit disjointed. I didn't think that was going to be an issue. But now listening to all the speakers being exactly the same. Yeah, I think I do prefer that. Is that something I can do upstairs? Yeah, probably not. But I can definitely keep that going on in here. And since the wife and kid have kind of taken over the living room since, you know, all the shutdowns and stuff like that. It's kind of nice to have my little man cave where I can just come and watch movies and, you know, do whatever I need to in here. So that's kind of cool. Now, I'm sure you're probably wondering about music listening. And for that, yeah, I would probably go upstairs and listen to some full range, you know, Martin Logan's as opposed to this system. Not that it's bad. I just have something better. So I would rather listen to everything upstairs. I did listen to about 30 to 40 minutes of my uh, audio demo tracks, which you can find the playlist on Tidal or Spotify links down in the description if you want to check those out to test out your speakers or your system. And it was okay. It wasn't the greatest. As you know, these have a three inch driver. There's no tweeters, so there's no, none of that separation. You don't get those, you know, crystally highs, whatever that means. But from my limited experience with soundbars, this sounds way better than that. So if you're thinking about upgrading from a TV sound only to this system or from a soundbar to this system, trust me, you're going to have a good, good time. So big thanks to OSD Black for sending in the speaker system for me to review. And of course, thank you for being patient, Dave and Simon. I know it's been a long time since you sent the system. There's just too many pieces I had to gather. And living in a place like this, I have to order everything and wait for it to come in. Oh, this is not going to work. I got to order something else. And it's just a big old mess. So thank you guys so much. Truly appreciate it. Also got to thank uh, the folks at Dream Media Home Theater for sending me the Denon X3700H. Thank you, fellas, so much. And of course, need to give a big shout out and thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. By the way, I got something special for all my patrons at the $5 level. I will be uploading 
all those Dolby Atmos demos that I talked about earlier in the video so you guys have access to them. So if you wanna become a patron, make sure you check out the link and become one today. All right, if you guys have any questions about this or anything else, let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on social or email, whichever you like to use. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad and I'll see you next time.